most of the commissioners present. So we will go ahead and bring our meeting to order for Monday, November 9th, 2020, the Human Rights Commission meeting in November. Uh, first up is uh, a restatement of the mission statement. Which commissioner would like to read the mission statement for us this week? I'll read it. Okay, thank you. Uh, the mission of the Palm Springs Human Rights Commission is to promote and protect the diversity of our community and to improve human relations through education and community awareness. Excellent, thank you. Um, no public comments have come in up to this point, so we will move on to item five, the approval of the minutes. We have minutes uh, included in the packet for October 13, 2020. Uh, is there any discussion on those minutes as submitted? Having none, I entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented for October 13, 2020. Second. Commissioner Ramaran seconded and Shepard uh, uh, moved the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I see eyes and hands and uh, Commissioner Aye. Andrade. I was absent, I need to abstain. I okay. This. So uh, any, any opposition? and abstentions. One abstention with Commissioner Andrade. All right, the minutes are accepted as presented. Thank you. Now we're on item six, Commissioner Staff and Student Comments. Uh, we can uh, begin with uh, the first person I see on my screen, and that's Commissioner Shepard with any uh, comments that you would like to make at the beginning of our meeting. Okay, uh, Commissioner Ramaran. Good evening, Chair and fellow commissioners. I'm so proud to um, wish you all happy Pride, Palm Springs Pride, uh, which we just celebrated this past weekend. Um, I'm so proud that I was part of the um, drafting of the, the proclamation for Filipino American History Month last month, as well as the, the uh, proclamation of Larry Itliang Day, which honored our, which honors our uh, labor movement with the Filipino migrant farm workers. Um, I also want to um, uh, say, you know, you know, my I'm a grandson of a of a uh, World War II veteran. Um, I'm the late Aquilina Ramoran, so I want to honor our veterans today on on Veterans Day, um, and um, and uh, also to acknowledge that we are on the the indigenous land of Sekhe of the. Agua Caliente Band of Coahuila Indians. So um, those are my comments tonight. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Andrade. Um, I, I would like to echo the upcoming Veterans Day um, um, acknowledgement. I'm married to a um, Vietnam era vet from the Air Force and um, proud of his service and everyone else's. So just like to say that. All right, very good. Commissioner Flood. Well, I guess I echo the Veterans Day too this Wednesday. Uh, I'm a veteran, a retired Navy. So anyway, uh, the Veterans uh, Administration on their blog said there are discounts and free meals and other programs for veterans. Uh, their families and caretakers and survivors. So uh, just want to wish them well. That's all. Thank you, Glenn. Vice Chair Chappelle. Well, um, I did go downtown for, for, for Pride. It was much quieter than I'm used to. Um, I did m miss the awesome parade that Palm S S Springs holds, and I missed w w w walking in it. This is my odd last year as a as a human rights commissioner, 
Um, I, I, I concur um, with the v Veterans Day. I also uh, thank uh, Commissioner Ramaran for the work that he does for the, the Filipino culture as a grand mother of a of of a grandson and one on the way that are f f f f Filipino descent um and i do think that our veterans day parade will be missed as well as the daughter of many vet veterans in our f family and a son who s s serves i uh, know that the veterans and uh, the people who serve um, and the ch children will m miss the uh, celebration here. Excellent, thank you. And uh, student representative Cash. Ellen, there's still, an issue with the still sound. Muted. Did it. it doesn't show that you're muted. And we can't unmute you because you aren't. You hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say the same thing as everybody else. Um, happy Veterans Day, and I'm glad to be celebrating veterans. Um, I actually had an experience this weekend that I wanted to talk about, but I'm not sure if now is the right time. Would it be okay to share it now? Chair is frozen. No, he's not. He's thinking. No, I was having a very <laughs> difficult time, a very difficult time uh, hearing. Um, Jay, any, any comments or updates? Uh, not for me, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I believe uh, student representative Ella Cash wanted to make a report and she was asking if uh, this is the appropriate time or if um, there's another section. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I, was, I wasn't hearing what you said. So uh, your report will come uh, at item eight uh, under Youth Education Affairs Committee. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ella. Uh, and for me, uh, you know, the number of folks have talked about the Veterans Day, uh, just uh, 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 hats off to the city of Palm Springs, uh, who will be uh, hosting a drive through appreciation event on Veterans Day, uh, taking place in front of City Hall this year, since we can't have our traditional Veterans Day parade to honor all who have served uh, the city has put together uh, this appreciation luncheon. So all veterans uh, who uh, have served can enter the convention center parking lot from Civic Drive and just drive through and uh, they'll uh, be recognized for their service and provided with a uh, luncheon uh, on uh, Veterans Day. Um, and also, uh, just a reminder, we uh, had a presentation on it at our last meeting, um, but uh, the residents um, and, and those interested parties are invited to apply for the city's equity and social justice committee. Uh, those applications are being accepted uh, through Tuesday, uh, December 1st. So the deadline is right upon us and the applications can be found on the City of Palm Springs uh, website uh, and you can get the, a little more information about that committee and there's an expectation that service on this, uh, this committee will, uh, 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 I believe, last a period of nine months when the um, findings will pre be presented back to City Council. So uh, any interested parties who are listening to our meeting or watching our meeting today um, and are interested or have any interest in, in serving with the city, uh, this Equity and Social Justice Committee uh, is a, a very important committee that is just being formed by our, our city council. 
So we encourage everybody to uh, look into that. And of course, we as the Human Rights Commission uh, have uh, two representatives that are serving on that uh, committee. And I believe it's uh, Commissioner uh, Shepard and Ramaran uh, are the two that we've uh, put forward to serve. Um, okay, that's uh, it on uh, comments um, and presentations. Uh, we have a guest speaker today, uh, planning Assistant Planning Director uh, David Newell is going to uh, give us an update on the general, the general plan. David, you're up. Good evening. Thank you for having me. I'm pleased to be here. Let me just pull up my presentation here. Just give me one moment. Okay. Hopefully you see the, the full screen of the presentation and not the, the framed background. So, um, so the reason I'm here tonight is to just give you an overview of the city's general plan update. Uh, before I do that, I'll uh, give you just a little bit of background on what a general plan is in case you might not be familiar. And then uh, just kind of go over what we're doing as part of our update to the city's general plan, um, where we're at in that process. And then um, I'm going to send you all uh, a, basically a form that you can complete uh, to help us as we proceed with where we're at in the current process, and that's updating the vision and priorities. So uh, for those who might not be familiar with the general plan, uh, it basically represents the community's values and view of the future. Um, it is a blueprint for growth in the city and development. Um, it defines the fabric of the city, the land uses throughout the city, um, the circulation patterns, um, air quality, noise, it addresses all of these topics um, and it is the guiding document for administrative and legal uh, legislative functions. Uh, so uh, it does provide uh, policy and uh, goals to address, uh, you know, what, like I said, the value of the city, values of the city and uh, programs in the city. Uh, it is the Constitution for Future Development Patterns in Palm Springs. Uh, every city is required to have one in, in California. Each uh, general plan does have uh, different plan diagrams. So what you see behind me here is the land use plan for the city. Uh, it is the one that we adopted in 2007 when we updated, we did a comprehensive update of our general plan. Uh, general plans are required to have goals and policies and goals being general and abstract uh, and policies being action oriented and representing city commitments. Uh, they also, the general plan also has implementation programs and those are actions that carry out all of the goals and policies. So uh, that's just kind of a high level overview of what a general plan is. Uh, Every city is required to have nine elements or chapters in a general plan. Some of these chapters can be combined. Uh, the city uh, has one additional chapter and that's the community, community design chapter. Um, but what we're looking at with the current update that we have budgeted is the land use, the circulation, the housing and the safety chapters or elements of the general plan. We expect there will be some minor changes to the conservation an open space element, uh, as well as the noise element. So the reason we are uh, going through this process is, uh, there's a few, obviously a few reasons I've listed here. Um, the city a couple of years ago was challenged on the way that the plan development district process was being utilized in the development community. And so as a part of that, we had created an ad hoc PDD or Plan Development District Committee uh, who made a number of recommendations to the City Council and ultimately the City Council adopted those recommendations. And as a part of that, now we have to update the general plan um, to reflect some of those changes. We're also doing an update uh, to address planning trends since this, the general plan was adopted in 2007. Um, the state has 
um, provide a new direction for general plans since 2007. And so we're looking to incorporate a lot of those policies in the general plan that we're, that, that we're doing as part of this update. Um, those relate to climate um, change, environmental justice, and this kind of tail, uh, dovetails into the next bullet point, legislative changes. So a lot of these things that we're looking at with our current update is to address some of the things that the, the state has come out with, with um, some legislative changes related to climate change, climate adaptation, um, environmental justice. Uh, so a number of policies and um, laws have been um, enacted and, that, and those are really the another reason why we're doing an update. Uh, of course, we want to confirm that our 2007 vision and priorities, kind of the high level overview of of the city's vision are appropriate. Um, as I'll mention in this uh, presentation, we've had some exercises already that we've had in the community with uh, outreach in terms of um, community forum, uh, surveys, things like that to get uh, feedback on our vision and priorities from 2007. And we've made some recommendations that we presented to council and council has asked us to do additional outreach on the, the long-term vision and priorities because um, those really are the guiding, uh, it's the guiding vision for Palm Springs um, <clears throat> really for the next 15 or 20 years. Uh, of course, we want to confirm that our goals and policies are also reflective of the vision and priorities. Uh, and so we're looking at uh, all of those as a part of this update. Uh, and then uh, we want to make sure that our implementation actions are uh, current and should be either updated or and either need to be updated or pulled out depending on what what each action uh, calls for. So really taking a fresh look at all, at all of the current um, goals and policies, um, the values of the vision and priorities and all of the actions that, that, that are within the current general plan. Um, so right now we're in step one, uh, even though we've been at this process for probably almost a year now. Uh, and that's confirming the vision and priorities. And so, uh, as I said, this went to city council. And so council, uh, after receiving a recommendation from the general plan steering committee, uh, which is the committee that's been established to um, provide direction and recommendations to the planning commission and city council on the general plan update. And so after they made a recommendation, the planning commission made a, made a recommendation, the council reviewed it they felt we needed to have more uh, input. And so, um, so we're kind of in, uh, we're in the midst of that as well as we're starting to do uh, step two, which is updating our goals and policies for the chapters or elements that we're looking at as a part of the kind of uh, larger efforts for the update. After we get through all of that, uh, we'll get into the administrative update. And so we're naturally making sure that we're addressing all of the state goals and policies um, in the general plan um, as part of our update. Uh, and then finally do the environmental review as required by the California Environmental Quality Act or CEQA as commonly referred to. And then finally adoption of the general plan. Um, so that's a kind of a high level overview of the update process. It really was expected to take an eight, expected to take 18 months the pandemic has um, prolonged it longer than we would have liked. So I know it'll probably be closer to a two year, uh, two year or more process. Um, so uh, this is just, like I said, just a brief introduction to this process. And uh, I, if anyone is interested in finding out more about this process, we have a, a, uh, a dedicated website uh, called psgeneralplan.com. And that has all of the kind of process or the, the background, the process. Um, it has updates for meetings and documents as we go through this process. And it uh, has a place where people can subscribe to receive updates via email. Um, so it's a, it's a good resource if anyone is interested in finding out about um, you know, the background, uh, when we're having meetings or uh, when we have surveys, we administer surveys from that website. So again, it's psgeneralplan.com. So again, the reason I wanted to um, introduce the general plan update to the Human Rights Commission is because um, the council has also asked that we get more feedback from various 
uh, stakeholders throughout um, the community. So the Human Rights Commission was one that was uh, specifically asked for comment on the vision and priorities. Uh, so what, what you see here on the screen is the vision statement. And so what's on the left is the 2007 vision statement that was adopted when the general plan was updated uh, 13 years ago. And so what's on the right is what we have for proposed revision. And so um, based on the feedback that we got from the survey that we um, administered, there was more of a, uh, an interest in um, ensuring that our vision reflected that we were a diverse, a vibrant, and an inclusive community. Um, as you can see here in the red, the text that's in red and underlined, that's new text from what was uh, adopted in 2007. And so what we're looking at for the proposed revision here on the right, uh, we've taken out the words that we've, uh, that we've removed, so you don't see those reflected as strike through, but um, really it's to kind of make sure it's a clean view of what the new vision and priority, or what the new vision of uh, the general plan is and so this is uh, what was recommended from the steering committee and ultimately the planning commission for consideration by council. Um, so what, as I said, what I'll do is I'll send uh, you all, I'll, I'll send it to Jay and make sure you all get a copy of the, um, of this revision to see, uh, you know, more specifically all of the details and changes. Um, and I'll also go ahead, uh, it'll also have the um, priorities uh, the revisions to the priorities from 2007. And so this is just a clean version of all the changes. There were originally 10 priorities, and I should note that while there are 10 priorities listed here in numerical order, none of them have weight over the other. They're all, uh, they all have equal weight. It's just a way to reference them when we're looking at um, all of these priorities. So as I said, there were 10 priorities in 2007 that were important. These are really the kind of first header sentences from each priority. And there's usually, and there's, there's each one has additional text after this uh, header that has, that really explains what the intent is with each priority. Um, there were, there was a recommendation from the Planning Commission to add two additional priorities and those are reflected as uh, 1B and 7B on the screen. And so, <clears throat> um, so now there's a, basically a total of 12 priorities that were, that we felt were, were or the Planning Commission felt would be important for Palm Springs uh, moving forward in the next 15 to 20 years. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense of where we're at, what the process is. Um, as I said, I'll send, we have a form that we've created for uh, for you to, to fill out if you can. We would appreciate your feedback. Um, and it would be, I'll just kind of give you a, uh, I'll show you what it is so you get a sense of what, uh, what I'm talking about here. Sorry, clicked the wrong button. Give me one second. see the um, vision priorities in the on the in the PDF okay so uh, so this is the general plan vision again it, uh, it really is the clean version of what's the proposed change um, I believe we shared with you the changes that um, were sent to City Council showing all of the um, changes from 2007 to current so this form that I'm sending you is really the clean version of the proposed vision and priorities. And in the, the vision, um, again, this is the vision we just looked at, and then there's the 12 priorities. What I've done is I've pulled out specific priorities that are related to uh, diversity and inclusivity. And so those are uh, 
and B, number three, number five, um, as those I think really are where we talk about making sure we have equity, um, diversity, inclusion, um, that are more specific uh, in terms of direction and policy. So I'll send you these. You can fill out the comment section below each one. And then um, I've also included all of the other priorities below those that you can provide comments on. Or if you just think that we should add another priority, you know, um, you can include that here in this last box. Um, so that concludes my presentation, uh, Chair, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, David. I, I have a question. So, David, the, the plan is intended to be at least a 15-year cycle. And is that the norm for, for these plans? Yeah, so the state recommends uh, that cities evaluate and um, update every 10 to 15 years. So we're kind of at the tail end of the 15, we're getting closer to the 15-year mark. Um, so these are really the ones that the, the chapters that we're updating with this uh, limited update are um, the ones that we felt were probably most appropriate at this time, given the budget that we uh, that we have. Okay, thank you. Any any other questions? Commissioner Aron. Hi, David. Thank you for your presentation. Um, there. Are I was involved with one of the community workshops earlier this year, which was really great. I was wondering if there's a date for the winter one yet. Yeah, so we've, uh, and that's one we're still trying to figure out because uh, the one that we had in February obviously was before the kind of shutdown of the pandemic. So we were able to have that one in person, which is great because it's, it's, it was an interactive workshop. Uh, we had stations set up where the public could interact with, you know, providing feedback on either a map or um, you know, giving us specific comments about you know, what works well or what doesn't in the city. Um, so to answer your question, it will be this winter. We don't have a date just yet. Um, PSJournalPlan.com will have the date once we finalize that. So um, that would be the place to look for it. A question just quickly, if I could. Um, David, thank you for the presentation. Um, is this the document that speaks to the regional housing numbers and requirements? Yes, it, it does. Uh, so the housing element, uh, it's, um, it's a document that we, is, is basically every eight years um, we have to update. And uh, our current housing element was last adopted in 2014 and it's through uh, 2021. And so we're updating that too. And we have some pretty specific deadlines that we have to meet under state law to make sure that we have that in place for the next eight year cycle. Um, so that's kind of also a factor that we're making. You know, we wanna make sure we have, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the factors for us for our timeline. Um, we have to submit that to the state by, I believe it's October of next year. So uh, we have to have that draft ready to go. And uh, just for uh, the benefit of, of everyone who might not be aware, um, the RENA or the Regional Housing Needs Allocation Assessment, uh, that's what that acronym stands for, R-H-N-A. And the Regional Housing Needs Assessment Allocation is what the state says or the regional planning agency, which is SCAG for us, and says uh, we have to have in terms of housing numbers, the allocated housing numbers that we have to have within that eight year period. And so during the 2014 to 2021 period, I think we had a total of 270 um, housing units that we were supposed to make sure that we had adequate uh, for all, all uh, housing range or medium, um, all housing income levels. So um, the new numbers that we're looking at are much, much higher than that. Um, the new numbers that we're looking at are about 2,500 housing units. And so we're having to make sure that we plan for that number of units uh, for this next cycle. Um, 
Palm Springs is fortunate as we still have available land. Some other cities are not as fortunate where um, they're kind of getting closer to build out and um, they're trying to figure out how they're going to meet their numbers because it's, it's throughout the state that um, housing obviously is an issue. And so uh, every city is looking at these uh, numbers and, and looking at how to address these, these, high, um, these high numbers. Thanks for that. David, will there be a deadline for the commissioners to submit comments on, on the uh, statement? Um, no, there's no specific deadline. If you can, and you know, I'll send it to, uh, to Jay tonight. I'll send it to you, Jay. And then, um, you know, if you can get it back to us within a couple of weeks, that's great. Um, we're doing a little bit more outreach within the next few weeks too, um, per council's direction. So, um, you know, if we can have it before or by the end of the month, that'd be great. So are we uh, commenting individually on these items or are we coming back with a, with a commission-wide uh, response? You know, it's, it, that's a good question. Um, the way it's tailored right now, it's for individuals to submit. Um, we did have the Sustainability Commission form a subcommittee to provide a kind of unified response. Um, so that's another approach that the commission might want to consider if, um, if that's more you know, desirable to the commission. Um, and that might be easier for the council to review as well. Um, so that's another option. If the commission prefers to do that, that's, uh, you know, we can have something where it's a subcommittee or the full commission that um, provides specific changes uh, kind of as an overall approach. Okay. And if you wanted to do that, you know, we could probably have a subcommittee if Jay's comfortable with it, work on it the next couple of weeks or a few weeks and then bring it back for um, you know, approval at the next meeting. Is there, are you having a meeting in December, Jay? Um, I believe we are. Uh, did, did we go dark, Mr. Chair? Uh, we are. We normally, we normally do. Right. And I would defer to the chair, David, for... Um, uh, direction on um, subcommittee and what? Yeah, I mean that's a, that's definitely an option. Um, we can do either one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk about it a little later on in the meeting to see how we best want to handle it as a group. Uh, so, are there any other questions with for David while we have them? No, okay, David, hey, we really do appreciate you taking the time to, to make the presentation and give us this background. It was uh, very informative. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, next uh, item eight, items for discussion. Uh, first up are um, the Palm uh, Community Relations Committee budget personnel. Uh, do we have anybody who would like to step up and take on uh, the budget committee uh, and um, that position's opened up? I don't think we had any volunteers uh, at the last meeting. Um, if not, I will welcome uh, Vice Chair Chappell uh, to join me on managing that. Uh, so we can bring it back to the to the com full commission um, at perhaps the December meeting. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, so the uh, no real action uh, action items out of the Palm Springs Police Department LGBTQ Outreach Committee. Um, the uh, that committee is moving forward on the um, organizing their annual town hall. Uh, which has been done for uh, maybe four years uh, or, or uh, maybe five. Um, and uh, it's been a great way for the police department to directly connect with the community. Uh, so that is uh, in the planning. Again, it's normally held in uh, the March, April uh, timeframe. And I think that's when um, uh, what's being uh, targeted for this year also. Uh, so that's uh, the update from the outreach committee. Uh, master calendar, uh, Commissioner Ramaran, I, this is 
uh, new for you to get into. Um, and, and we do have an event on November 20th and uh, you want to give us an update? Sure. On November 20th, we have tra the Transgender Day of Remembrance. Um, it's being hosted um, at uh, the Palm Springs City Hall, as everyone knows, and it's going to be from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, it's hosted with our, our wonderful community partners of the Transgender Health and Wellness Center and Tommy Clinton. And um, in the Facebook in invitation, and I hope and spread it, or, you know, as well as, of course, it's on our calendar for the city. Um, the description reads as such. It is a day that the community in, commun in Coachella Valley comes together in solidarity, putting our differences aside to raise, raise awareness about transgender violence and inequality, and those that we lost in 2020 to transgender violence for the greater good. Funds raised at this event help those within the transgender community that face violence, oppression, and discrimination. That's the uh, description for Transgender Day of Remembrance on November 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. here at City, uh, at City Hall. And it, as you mentioned, uh, Chair DeHart, that it's a, uh, a drive-through um, event. So how could we have representation from the commission if, uh, if at all possible? Do you know? You know what, I, my, I apologize, I didn't hear your question. How, how does the commission have representation? We've attended in person in years past, uh, but I, how would we how would we attend to show support this year? This year, um, like you mentioned, I, um, well, we I've, have we. This is those are the things that I'm still learning about with <laughs> being on this wonderful uh, master calendar subcommittee. So, um, I'd love to hear from the commission that's been you know participating in the past few years because it's been um, going on for a while. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so we've attended, I've, I've been the representative in person in years past. I just don't know how we can show support uh, with this year's program. So if, um, uh, if, if we can have a volunteer that can attend in person this year, if we're able to, then maybe between Commissioner Ramaran and, and somebody, uh, our volunteer who's able to attend, to represent the council or the commission, uh, if we can attend, at least we're there to show support. Uh, but we don't. We understand we don't know how we can attend yet. But uh, that if we at least have a volunteer who can attend and is available November 20 from five to seven, if there is in-person um, uh, opportunity, um, then that can be coordinated with the commissioner Ramaran. Do we have somebody whose calendar is open for the 20th from five to seven? Chair, in uh, years past, um, uh, the commission had a t table, of course, we cannot do that. Um, and I ap pol pol apologize, but I have to uh, be away so I can cannot. Yeah, and, and the reason why I'm asking, I'm not able to either. I've got another commitment on the 20th. So we need another commissioner who can attend on our behalf. So I will, that, I'm sorry. Perhaps, go ahead. Could I'm that sorry. be um, perhaps our banner? Like we could put our banner on the side of a vehicle or something like that. I mean, if it's a drive-through kind of a thing, at least we would have a presence. Yeah, we don't, we don't know what, we don't know what, so that we just don't know what that what it, uh, presence includes. So we just need someone who said who will say I will be in attendance on November 20 from five to seven. And if it means putting our banner on the side of the car, then you'll make sure that that happens. Yeah, or have the banner chair. If they're having social distant activity, then we'll learn that uh, you know Commissioner Amaran will find that out. For us. That's a Friday. So yeah, yes, so, it's a Friday. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll do that. I'll do it. Okay. All right. So sweet. So thank you. So uh, 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 Commissioner Andrade and Commissioner Omron, if the two of you can just uh, communicate directly with one another uh, after you find out what those specifics are, uh, Commissioner Omron. Absolutely. Because um, I really, I, yeah, I don't know how they're social distancing it for sure. So no, thank you. Look, thank look, you look for the 
I was just looking at the website to make sure, but there is, you're right, there is no, um, there are no specifics. And, and I'd be happy to also um, attend with, in a car. Sweet. If, if really. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you both. Um, okay, uh, Main Street, um, you know, no human relations uh, specific items coming out of Main Street, um, you know, this in this last month. Um, so nothing to report there. Finance, uh, we, Vice Chair and I will come back uh, with that uh, at our next meeting. Um, 1PS, did we have representation at 1PS? Is there any update? Next up is the Cultural Affairs Committee, the Community Service Awards, which the Vice Chair uh, Chappelle and I will oversee. And uh, Vice Chair, do you want to uh, introduce the nominating sure. form? Sure. So um, um, uh, inc included in your packets was um, a copy of the nomination form, um, which will go on line as well. Um, I j j Jay, will there be a uh, blurb about it anywhere? It 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 usually is shown up in the paper or other places once. Um, you um, <clears throat> issue a, um, a press release on it and uh, announce it through our social media channels. Right, and commissioners can share um, the information on their personal Facebook pages. Um, the applications are due back December 3rd. Um, and in the past, we have had community activists. Um, we have had um, uh, people who are com community activists in various ways. Um, music, authors, um, people who have um, uh, uh, helped um, others who have uh, the physical and intellectual di disabilities. Um, we have um, had awards for community people who have gone over and above. I mean, that's w w w what it's all about. So people from ch churches, um, uh, the Palm Springs <laughs> Police Department, um, so just be th thinking of an anybody that you know who you could nominate, um, encourage your f friends, um, and um, post it on your f Facebook page. Um, and hopefully we will get a nice uh, amount of applications. Chair, I think we got about 20 last year, 25 applications. Yeah, a little um, more than two. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, years. Some, 20 sometimes years. we get a whole bunch. Other times we don't get get half half as much as we got the year before. Um, I don't know how the how the awards will look this year, um, but in any case, it is important, and the people who are honored are uh, honored and provided with a plaque. Um, and they uh, uh, have a lot of appreciation for it. So if we can be thinking about that, um, there's only a couple of weeks to uh, get the, app, the applications in and um, then we can go from uh, there. Um, the awards will uh, be on February 8th. Of course, we don't know yet what those will look like, but I have a hunch, so. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be a virtual program uh, that, that that we'll work on. Um, but for the rest of the commission and for those watching the program, uh, everybody's invited to submit nominations. Um, you know, I, ideally, uh, the we are recognizing and honoring. Uh, residents of Palm Springs, but uh, somebody can live outside of Palm Springs and still be recognized as long as their work there is having an impact, um, you know, on residents in Palm Springs. 
Um, it typically goes to volunteers, somebody who's volunteering their time and energy uh, to promote human rights um, in uh, the city. Um, uh, but it, it, it can go to somebody who in their work capacity is going over and above what would be their typical job duties and responsibilities. So uh, there's um, you know, a, a, a great opportunity to recognize those that are, are um, you know, really serving our community. And uh, it's a short window, it doesn't drag on forever. Um, so December 3rd, uh, the applications will be available on the Human Rights Commission website. And, um, and I'm sure they'll be downloadable once the city uh, does the post uh, and the announcement, uh, which I would suspect is gonna come any day now. Okay, uh, questions on the awards program? I, have a, I guess it's a question. Um, I remember last year we asked if we could see a list of the previous honorees so that we did not duplicate um, applications. So hopefully that'll sure. be on the website as well. Uh, it is on the website, um, uh, and Commissioner Andrade, I, um, I just, I have not seen it in the last handful of months, so I don't know if 2019 honorees are on that. Um, uh, so we may have to, it may have to be updated for 219, but uh, it is, it is on the website um, currently, and, um, and we will share when we come back in the December meeting, what will happen is um, the subcommittee will share a, um, a slate of recommended um, uh, awards uh, or honorees for the full commission to review and to you know, have their background information on that honoree. And then we will vote in December uh, for those who will be recognized at the February meeting, okay? And, and we, we can make sure, after we make sure if the list is updated, Commissioner Andrade, uh, we, can, we can have it sent to the commission to, to make sure everybody's got it, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions on the Community Service Awards? Mr. Chair, I just checked it is updated. Oh, sweet. Excellent. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Vice Chair. Um, next item we have, I'm sorry. The next, com next committee, where are we at? Uh, We're at the oh, Desert Highland uh, Gateway. Desert Highland Gateway Association. Did we have any representation at the meeting? Uh, this I month? have not been to the meeting. Uh, the, the, I got uh, there was positive feedback about the voting assistance center that was set up uh, for the election, so that went quite well. But I did not physically mm -hmm. attend the meeting. Okay. So Next up, uh, we have Commissioner Flood on veterans issues, and we may have stolen your thunder by talking about the Veterans Day event. Uh, apologies for that. That's quite all right. That, I have nothing else to add on that. Uh, this uh, Wednesday, uh, November 11th. And uh, locally, of course, the, uh, the American Legion is struggling, but they have outdoor dining, and uh, so those of you who can go there can walk in the go. <laughs> so, but I have nothing else on that. Okay, and now we've got the Youth Education Affairs Committee update and uh, Representative Cash, this is your opportunity for your report. Can anybody yes, hear her? Can you hear me now? Mm. Yes. yes, yes. Sorry, I'm not sure what's wrong with my computer. Um, I wanted to share a story from this weekend, an experience that I had. So on Saturday evening, um, after we found out the results of the election, 
um, my family decided to go downtown and we had flags on our car. Um, one of them was the American flag and one of them was a Black Lives Matter flag. And we were driving through downtown and um, my dad was honking the horn. So we were making some noise. And there was a police officer who um, flashed his lights and had us pull over. And he told us we couldn't um, honk because it was causing a disturbance. So we said, okay. But he also made a comment that I did not feel was very appropriate. He said, um, you can fly whatever flag you want, but I appreciate if you don't fly that flag next to the American flag. So I just thought that that wasn't very, I don't know, professional or appropriate. And I was pretty, my dad and I were pretty disturbed by that comment. Hmm. Did you get his identification? Dad was trying to remember so he could make a report or something, but we didn't. He also came up to the car without a mask on too. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Seems like to me that's something that we need to make sure gets reported up through the police department just so that they're aware that we had such an incident and I'm terribly sorry for, to you and your family that that happened to you. You're absolutely right. It's 100% inappropriate. You're allowed to fly any flag you want. If you recall, it is America. Yeah. So, uh, I echo Commissioner Shepard's uh, comment. Uh, you know, it certainly is not something that should have happened to your family, but uh, we sure are glad that uh, you're standing up and sharing your experience with us. Um, and, and we'll follow up after this meeting if you might be able to give us a little more details on the location and the time and day. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, we, we can help facilitate uh, getting the incident uh, shared with the police department so they're aware, okay? Um, and if they want to have additional questions, if you or your dad might be available, uh, that's, that's good. If not, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, we will at least raise, the, raise uh, awareness on the incident so it's known at the police department, okay? Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I'm sorry that it, uh, it, uh, uh, you had to experience that, um, especially after or, or while you were in such a celebratory mode <laughs> on Saturday. So uh, thank you. Uh, okay. Any, anything else from our uh, youth education subcommittee? We're good there. Uh, Commission uh, development mediation. So uh, mediation, uh, we have Commissioner Andrade and uh, under the uh, subcommittee, we also have the retreat with Chappelle and DeHart and there's been no action on retreat, but on mediation, Commissioner Andrade, um, RJ, have we heard anything new on um, resources or uh, um, trainings that are available? I actually, we have heard some information um, and I will forward this to the group. It's information I received from the uh, Community Action Partnership, which provides services throughout Riverside County. Um, and in this particular case, it's, they provide their own mediation. And so if we were to refer cases over to them, uh, it would cost each of the parties a $25 fee, um, which I hope isn't uh, you know uh, too prohibitive in, in some cases it may be, so it could be difficult. But as part of our charge or the uh, commission's charge, uh, the Human Rights Commission receives complaints and uh, reports of discrimination. And so in terms of training, this group, the um, Community Action Partnership also provides training. Uh, what I need to work out with them is whether that is specifically for the mediators they have working for Community Action Partnership, or if it's a general training that the uh, individuals in any community can use to go out and help their own communities. So um, 
I'll shoot uh, the information on that mediation out to everyone. And then uh, we can go from there in terms of deciding <clears throat> whether or not to pursue the training, which the last quote I saw was $300 uh, per session. And I think they are still providing the training in a remote setting. So uh, that I believe is still available. Um, <clears throat> I'm checking with other sources, but really haven't found any to find um, other uh, training opportunities for, for commissioners interested in serving as a mediator. Okay, thank you for that. Um, you know, that, that seems like a great, uh, a great price uh, for training if there was a group of two or three people that were interested, that, that would be, uh, you know, a bargain, I think. Um, so Jay, whatever, whatever you, you learn on your inquiry there, let us know so we can you know, figure out how do we move forward. That $300 though is per trainee, right? No, I, I didn't think, I because I looked at that too, and I didn't get the impression it was a group setting. I thought that it was per certification because they certify you when you're finished with the training. I'll, I'll clarify that. Okay. Um, you may be okay. right. Okay, excellent. Yeah, let us know. Um, Either way, I guess it's good news that uh, the resource has been identified and we can come back and look at, um, you know, Commissioner Andrade, you've consistently expressed desire and interest to, uh, you know, to get that training um, and, and let's see who else we may have um, once we get more information from, uh, from, uh, from Jay, okay? And I see uh, Commissioner Shepard raised, uh, raised her hand uh, with interest. Uh, to get the training also. So, uh, okay, excellent. That, uh, that's some good information for us. Um, committee assignments, uh, has anybody had a, a, a driving desire to take on any, any uh, one of the other committees or join another committee that looks of interest to you? We um, uh, will continue to look at where we have holes and then uh, vice chair and I will then invite uh, commissioners to serve where there's openings, okay? Um, next up, the update on uh, renaming of streets. Uh, that's Commissioner Ramaran and Commissioner Owen, uh, who has uh, submitted, uh, Commissioner Owen has submitted a resignation from uh, the commission uh, for uh, due to some family responsibilities, and um, you know, it, uh, it's we're we're certainly sad to see him leave uh, as one of our new commissioners coming on board with uh, a lot of promise. Um, but uh, we know this this subcommittee is in good hands, Commissioner Ramaran, and we certainly will need to get somebody else to serve. Um, so if you have interest in serving on um, this subcommittee, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, let us know so we can get you uh, teamed up with Commissioner Ramaran. Uh, I don't know if there is any updates, Commissioner Ramaran. Um, no, um, that was the big update. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Duarte. Um, but the one thing about it is too, it was really good to have this um, presentation around the general plan because when you think of renaming streets, this is a big issue. Yeah, and so um, I, I hope someone will join me, please. Okay, uh, you're up again, Commissioner Amaran. Item 8D, the Clean Indoor Air and Health Protection Draft Ordinance. Uh, we're working with the Sustainability Commission to combine um, you know, the um, approved language from both of our commissions um, I, that came out of our commissions last year. So you wanna give us an update? I believe uh, you've had some communication with them. Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm actually working um, directly with Commissioner, excuse me, Commissioner Carl Baker. And um, he has a background which actually includes having worked in, in Santa Monica, for instance. So there are a couple things besides the two documents that we're actually looking at and um, the, the, or, the, the minute, the motion from the Human Rights Commission was actually from October 2018. So we're looking at a couple years now, right? 
chair in terms of incorporating um, the, the language of the ordinances. And so some of the big items that we've been meeting about and we've been, uh, Carl and I have been meeting, Commissioner Baker and I have been meeting uh, on Fridays around uh, 10 o'clock um, in the morning. And we are looking at, for instance, the, the definitions uh, um, that will incorporate um, cannabis, for instance, in, 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 this, or, in this ordinance. Um, we're looking at the, the, the reality of cigar lounges and retail tobacco stores. In, um, and we're also looking at how what, what the impact of this, or actually how we're going to be wording this, uh, on its impact dealing with the difference between condominiums and apartments. Um, we're, we're looking at phased approaches, uh, step by step approach, hopefully, um, and uh, looking at how we're going to be designating smoking areas. Um, in particular, we, you know, there's a lot of discussion around, for instance, the Arenas um, district, uh, with the the the, uh, the you know the high concentration of bars there and the, and the smoking areas that are there. Um, we also are looking very much at equity, and equity is a, a very important. Um, issue around um, clean air ordinances, and in particular, looking at how you know those who can you know who can own their own home or own their own cars, you know where you know where smoking would be prohibited, um, uh, versus um, again like again commercial spaces and of course public public um, um, uh, uh, automobiles, if you will. Um, um, we're looking at also the, the impact on the economy. Of course, um, he, he, you know, we spoke about how, you know, with or, uh, tobacco ordinances like this and, and clean air ordinances, we there are uh, issues of how businesses will be affected, or hopefully there, there could be a boom, for instance, um, when when things like this are, in, you know, are enforced. Um, we're also looking at the consensus between the two documents. Um, um, and just to give a quick timeline, um, and that those will be my last comment. We're looking at it's something that this may not be in, enacted until probably after our, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic is under control, if you will. And um, so this is looking at like after, even after 2021. Um, and we did speak about how we would, there would be a very important level of awareness, an, an awareness campaign that the city would be involved in, in regards to um, rolling out uh, the, an ordinance around clean air and tobacco. tobacco. Um, the clean air, in, I'm sorry, clean indoor indoor air and health protection draft ordinance. So to be more precise, but that's my um, update. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And um, you, you mentioned tobacco, but we're not just focusing on tobacco, correct? Correct. We're looking at clean air. So, um, and that's why I started off um, earlier also speaking about um, cannabis and its impact on clean air in our city. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you for that update. Um, if we don't have any other committee reports, we are on eight item 8D, topical and newsworthy items. If anybody has any specific items of uh, note that you would like to bring forward, uh, this is the time to do it. I don't see anybody, I, I see I a do. hand. Raise. Yeah, I do. Um, as our recent election took place, um, Christy Holstage, as we all know, was uh, running for re-election in her district. And um, we had some incredibly um, awful, for lack of a better word, um, campaigning from the other side, talking about paternity or talking about maternity and how are you able to be a commissioner with an infant and breastfeeding and all kinds of things that have absolutely, you know, no connection to a person's job whatsoever. And I think that created quite an outrage amongst people that I'm familiar with in the city. And then to have a police officer pull over a family and question their showing of a Black Lives Matter uh, flag to me, that's a little bit of a red flag in our police department. I, love our chief of police. I think he's doing a great job, but we've got a couple of incidents there that, you know, I realize the Police Officers Association is separate from the department and all of that, but it's really kind of giving, I think, a bad taste or the beginnings of a bad taste. And certainly anybody that's had a bad taste with the police department 
that's being reinforced with these kinds of actions. And I don't know what our process is, if there is one to, you know, address something like that and nip it before it starts to become a trend or something. You know what I mean? Our police yeah, I think department I, I, of you're, all, you're, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, you're, 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 you're you know, talking about something that isn't just new for this election. You know, the misogyny, the homophobia, the biphobia, uh, the racism that has existed goes, goes, goes back. And, and I think that's a, a big, big foundational reason why we, this council has got this equity uh, uh, committee that's being formed now okay. with the hope that we can start to bring some kind of um, you know, greater change, uh, higher level of awareness and discussion in the community on an ongoing basis. But um, yes, I, I, I appreciate you, you know, sharing, you know, your thoughts about this recent election. Um, you know, there, there certainly is no place for those comments that were coming, uh, that were specifically directed toward, um, you know, council member Holstitch, um, you know, it, uh, so, you know, we, we do have to come together as a community and figure out, um, you know, how, how do we, how do we, sh you know, show that we're better than that, um, you know, as a whole, so. Um, and it is a, you know, I guess it's a little bit of a larger issue in our community than I thought. Maybe I'm naive having not lived here my whole life, but um, my partner is Asian and she has had some um, rude things said for, to her at grocery stores and stuff. And as the whole Trump era permissiveness on things that used to be stuff people just wouldn't say, um, somehow it feels like we need to try to get our arms around that a little bit and bring back the decency and the norms that we were all holding ourselves to in the past. It's a real concern. I'm in a small little desert town for the police officer to say something to Ella's family like that is just, it's just outrageous to me. And I just don't see how as a, a commission we can't make, you know, serious complaint about that, those issues. Yeah. Well, we, we certainly will move it forward. But I, th I think at the, the basis of your comments, uh, let's keep the conversation and keep, keep bringing it to this table. And, and, and let's identify, you know, how, you know, what, what are ways where we can be directly involved? There's uh, you know, are there opportunities where, where we can, you know, elevate the conversation? Uh, so let's, let's continue to have that conversation here, you know, at the commission and, and really think on, on how can we, uh, how can we be, you know, one of the elements that bridges these divides, uh, you know, in, in the city. So. I'm wondering if maybe we couldn't um, get a speaker from the Fair Political Practices Commission because I know that um, um, Council Member Holstage posted clearly what the violations were of um, campaign protocols. And so it would seem that, at least for her, there is some recourse. But I think for us to understand where the, the where are the lines and, and where did they get crossed over? Um, like you said, mentioning things that have absolutely nothing to do with governance or, or your ability to do so. Um, so I would wonder if there would be an opportunity for us to hear from them as I know they're busy right now, but um, down the road perhaps um, before our next election, local election, if we could find out maybe some, some guidelines as to what is and isn't not just appropriate, but allowed. That'd be great. And, and to Terry um, and uh, Donna too, um, in the past when there was a lot of com community concern um, about what was going on um, with the community and the how the police department was possibly interacting, we did um, invite um, the chief who brought um, somebody else w with him. I can't remember what his title was. 
um, to hear what the concerns were. So if we keep taking um, a, a check of what's going on out there, um, we might want to do that again too, because once it's out there and people know when they're talking about it and it comes here, um, that's what the purpose of this com mission is too. Yeah, yeah is, uh, maybe it's something on the, on the agenda item for the next meeting. Is there some way we could put something on there to say that we are wherever that we can discuss it? Or maybe if we, uh, I don't know if Jay could put the word out if we need a, someone from uh, uh, city government in general, uh, whether it's the, the chief or the police or some representative. I just don't know what how we would uh, uh, put that on the agenda, but we need I don't to. Know. There, but I, but I do think that it's it's a good idea for us as a commission to to indicate that that the very things that we stand for and the very things that our that our mission um, speaks to have been right. violated by you know somebody during this this particular campaign and it's inappropriate and it concerns us. Yes. I think for us to let it go and just say that that's politics or to you know, depend on on uh, Christy to have to fight her own battle. That's that's what we're here to do is to I point agree. out these things and and it's had national publicity as well. You know, we have such a wonderful reputation as an LGBT um, resort area, and I hate to let stuff like that out and start diminishing our reputation or tarnishing our reputation. Agreed. And it's just wrong. It's just wrong. It's so wrong. From a women's perspective and a mother and grandmother's perspective, I was horrified. I hadn't heard anything like that in 50 years. Right. That's true. So our, our city clerk is very knowledgeable in this area, as well as our city attorney. So I'll check with them to see if they can't uh, spend some time with us, maybe at uh, one of our upcoming meetings. Um, just to uh, address this topic. Uh, <clears throat> so on a couple areas and maybe even the police chief, he's been sitting in a lot of community meetings lately. So uh, I'm sure he'd be very willing to um, state the position of the department on some of these items. Okay, thank you. And Ron, before you move on from committees, I have a question about the Cultural Affairs Committee, the awards you talked about, and then there's a, a B under there about the Des Desert Highlands Gateway Community. Um, can you tell me what that um, committee or subcommittee does briefly? So for the Desert Highland Gateway Estates Community Association, what uh, the Human Rights Commission has made a commitment to for a good number of years was to have representation and attend their community meetings and, and be there on behalf of the Human Rights Commission so we can uh, hear what the concerns are in the committee, uh, I mean in the community, and, and bring those concerns or thoughts or, uh, or, or uh, good deeds uh, back to the, the full commission so uh, we can be aware of what's happening. And uh, we typically have had one or two commissioners who have uh, been, uh, um, you know, have volunteered to attend those meetings uh, on a regular basis. And it's the s uh, second Tuesday of the month, I think. Okay. Uh, and and I, I'd like to um, volunteer to participate in that um, committee fine. if, if there's a, a space for me to do so. Well, I think between, uh, between yourself, Commissioner Flood and Commissioner Andrade, uh, if we have three commissioners and we can get consistent uh, representation. So if the three of you could communicate on a, a monthly basis on who's gonna cover that month's meeting, uh, okay. that would be fantastic. And, and having three commissioners available to do that, uh, I think, uh, uh, we would be able to be in attendance at, at every meeting that they have. So uh, that's great. That, Thank you for that, that Just up. FYI, I used to go, uh, it, sometime it would bump up against the meetings I was attending at the American Legion on the right. same Tuesday or something. And so I would have to rush from that meeting and sometimes the American Legion would be run over. But until uh, up until a 
COVID started, COVID-19, I, I was pretty much making almost every meeting, but it's been a while since, and of course, they're not having any. Haven't had them, yeah. So, Are they I, ha they're I, not I, having any. Three people devoted to, to going, that would be great. Okay. Are they having yeah. Zoom? or anything yeah. or just no meetings? I'm, I, they, I've attended several Zoom meetings, so okay. uh, I know I know they're they're still having, um, they may be a little uh, informal, but they okay. are having gatherings on a regular okay. basis. So I think it's great if we have three commissioners that are committed to it, um, we can make sure that every, if uh, one person's schedule is tied up, the next person can uh, could stand up and be in attendance. So that's good. Thank so thank you. Yep, perfect. Um, okay, any other uh, questions along? Yes, Commissioner Amaran. I, I wanted to just chime in on the, on the conversation and discussion. Um, and, you know, I'm so proud that we have, uh, you know, voted in this past election. It was, you know, we have reasons to celebrate. We do have a president, you know, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, first woman black and south asian women to serve to, to be coming to serve as our vice president we have so much to celebrate we also can celebrate you know um you know you know christy will be you know re-elected you know she will be our first woman mayor this is exciting you know this is so exciting and lisa middleton will be re-elected re re as, as it's as it's probably going to turn out and you know the the biphobia and the homophobia that was experienced in this election in Palm Springs was very indicative and uh, very 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 palpable actually, that you know it, that it extended actually you know in a lot of the, a lot of the other elections in the throughout the Coachella Valley we saw the level of misogyny, of, of hatred of women that was just like, uh, you know unacceptable. And um, we saw those in the, in, the, in, the, in the elections in Palm Desert and in Coachella, in India. We saw that. And it's not just us here in Palm Springs. And I want to know, you know, I want us to know that, you know, we as a, as a commission can, you know, can make, you know, as, you know, I, this is the first time I ever was involved with the proclamation for, you know, a, a historic day in like, such as Filipino American History Month. We should be able to do these proclamations where we say, hey, this is wrong. We are a commission that says this is, this is not right. So I believe that this can be a way that we can also proactively be a commission versus just sort of sitting and just sort of taking it and like, you know, this is how it is. It's not how it is and it shouldn't be. Um, so I, I, I've grabbed, you know, we have grants to celebrate as well. So I'm, I'm very, um, very proud of, of that part of it. And I'm, you know, Commissioner Shepard, I'm so uh, excited to be uh, serving with you. We're going to be, you know, the forthcoming meetings with uh, with the Equity and Social Justice Committee will be very, very important. And we know that our our, our council members, uh, Hostage and Grace Garner, will be um, these. You know, they're they're the ones in charge of that uh, of that committee as well. So I'm very excited to be working on that as well. So there are a lot of avenues. I wish we could be stronger and have these stronger statements that are out there publicly that represents the city of Palm Springs, not just the C C Human Rights Commission, but the city. I appreciate that. And I'm gonna indulge myself for two minutes. I, I hope you'll listen. Um, one of the things that's been driving me crazy, and it's a small thing, but it speaks. We've spent, I don't know how much money painting bike lanes on streets and making the city pretty and painting this and painting that. And I love all of that. I think that's wonderful. But I've been trying for three years to get a traffic bump, a traffic calming bump on um, Tramview and Desert Highlands. <laughs> I can't get anybody to pay the slightest bit of attention to me. I, I ask around over there myself periodically. I live in Mountain Gate, so I drive through that neighborhood a couple of times a day. It's the only thing they've ever asked me, and I'm unable to deliver that. So if anybody has any suggestions of how to get that done, I would greatly appreciate it because it's the little things that speak to a community so loudly. You know, they drive around, the, that neighborhood drives around the rest of the city as well, sees all the pretty markings here and there, and all they want is a speed bump so their kids don't get killed over by the James O. Jesse Center. So anyway, thank you for indulging me back. I agree with that. <laughs> And so I, um, we probably could find out who it, uh, I don't know if it's um, 
the assistant city manager's office, but uh, I do know uh, city council just gave their go ahead on a, a number of these speed bumps that are being installed uh, in, in a handful of uh, communities. So God, uh, I hope they're you know, on there. You know, I, I'm, I'm not aware of the list and, uh, um, you know, I don't know, Jay is, is, uh, is the assistant city manager's office, the one that Commissioner Shepard could send a note to? Uh, that's, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Marcus Fuller, assistant city manager. Um, Who is? Marcus Fuller. Okay. Right. He oversees all the public works projects. So this is one of many, many that he oversees. But, um, but I asked both Jeff Kors and Christy, so I thought I had gone to the top, but you know, sometimes little issues are too, too little for the top. So I'll go any direction you point me. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Mention it, mention it to Marcus. Okay. So okay, thank, thank, thank you for that. And, and, and I appreciate the, the comments that were made. And, and please know, you know, uh, you know as, as a, a commission that's bringing on uh, new members, uh, we are only limited by the, our abilities of the uh, nine people sitting around the table. So the, you know, we have long stood uh, and, and have we, we have long been involved in this community uh, for, for decades. Uh, and, and that involvement in the community has been driven by the members sitting around this table. So if there's a desire, if there's a, an issue that's identified, the only people who are going to take that issue forward are the nine of us sitting around the table. So please, um, let's you know come you know br bring those thoughts forward. But it just can't be a thought. Remember, right. we have we are the actionable people. Uh, we don't have a team of twenty people working with us. Right. So we have to we have to bring the idea forward, and then we have to put action behind that idea. And and there's nothing limiting us. Uh, as to what what direction we can go, uh, how often we take a stand, uh, how frequently we send a letter to city council asking for their support or to raise awareness on a particular issue. Um, you know, we've done proclamations for forever. Uh, if it's it's in it's in our hands to be able to bring that type of stuff forward. So please keep keep the ideas and thoughts coming, and then let's put action behind it. And so for, process, um, for process question, I feel like what Ella brought forward tonight would be really a complaint to the Human Rights Commission, even though she's a part of the commission. So where does that lie? Who, who does the follow-up lie with on when it, hers or whenever we get a complaint of any type? So is there, it, there, there is, there's a formal complaint process that residents can follow. Um, you know, for you know, submitting a complaint of discrimination or um, uh, issues along those lines. So there's a form that can be submitted and, and, and shared um, that, that formally comes to the commission. So that certainly is something that, um, you know, Representative Cash and, and her family uh, can do. Um, but we also have the ability to do what, what uh, I stated earlier, uh, we will raise, we will provide the information that Ella is going to give us and, and bring it to the attention of the police department and, and expect some kind of feedback as to um, whether they will come and speak with us at, at a future meeting um, uh, or, or we will ask for a response based off of the information that we'll share with them. So for, you know, there's definitely, there's, there's different, different avenues that can go. Uh, so Ella, Ella and, and her family certainly has the right to file that a formal complaint um, or we as a commission uh, will go forward uh, and raise, raise the issue with the police department. Okay. And, and ch Chair, um, what I uh, wanted to say, um, um, uh, be for, um, uh, 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 the discussion, which I agree with, but for all of you, when you're th thinking about people in the community who do good, 
um, all of the time and you're proud of them or you appreciate them and they don't get their recognition or they don't care to have that. That's what this application for the awards is about. So just keep that in, in, in uh, mind when you're looking to cause change because the people who we recognize even in times when they don't care to have that done for, for, for them, it is done for, 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 for them to change the culture. Excellent. Okay, uh, item nine, agenda items for the next uh, Human Rights Commission meeting. I've got a few notes that uh, uh, we're gonna bring the community service nominations back through subcommittee. Finance subcommittee will bring the uh, budget back to the full commission. And Jay was going to uh, check with the possibility of having the city clerk um, you know, speak to us, uh, if not at our next meeting, uh, you know, maybe uh, early in January or February about the uh, guidelines and, and fair practices, um, you know, elements that, uh, you know, we're feeling were violated during this most recent election. Um, what else did we have? Um, Mr. Chair, subcommittee for the general plan versus to provide a one voice response for the commission or just have everyone submit individual comments or both. Yeah. I and thank you for reminding me I intended to talk about that. Are we able to act on that now since it wasn't an agenda item? Um, I believe you can form a subcommittee. Uh, are, are you saying decide on how to respond? Yeah, you know, doing, doing it individually or doing it as a group? Uh, you know, it, it, if you it came up as part of the presentation if you wanted to okay. do that as a motion. All right, so let's to just take a, a, a few minutes, two minutes to, you know, what's the, the, the feeling of the commission? Uh, do, do we want to uh, maybe come together as a group and have a study session on this and then reply individually or come together as a group uh, and reply on behalf of the entire commission uh, to uh, the planning department uh, or uh, not come together there is a group in a study session per se, uh, and each of us individually submit our thoughts to the uh, planning department. What are thoughts on the direction that you would like to go? I think that we should um, consider submitting a reply that is commission-wide, thought out by us, decided by us. That's I think it has more weight. Um, some people understand some issues more than other people that can maybe chime in and help a little bit. Um, and we can, I think we can learn a lot in, in a situation like that where we would come together and discuss the vision for our city as, as a commission. Ron, how, how would we do that? Would we each submit and then we have a subcommittee to compile? Maybe, um, I would think maybe we can just do a study session. Good. Um, uh, and then, you know, out of that study session, um, elevate the thought for the entire uh, commission. And if we needed to have action, we could carry it on the agenda so we could move on it. Um, so maybe we, we agendize that for uh, December and January uh, so we can be prepared to move forward. Okay. So maybe we can meet, um, you know, or Jay, you can tell us if it's a possibility to have a study session prior to our next meeting. Um, I don't know what we would need if we schedule an hour um, prior to uh, our, our next, I don't have the date in front of me. Oh, December 14 at 5.30. Um, would we be able to do that? Oh, we can definitely do that depending on everyone's schedules. Um, yep. 
I can distribute the uh, information presented by uh, uh, Mr. Newell uh, tomorrow, and you can all take a look, formulate individual comments, and then come together before December 14th to um, uh, consolidate your response. Perfect. Does that feel good for everybody to go the direction Jay just mentioned? Yeah. Okay. So, um, what is going to be best on scheduling for uh, a study session prior to December 14? Mr. Chair, my sense is uh, this, this team has Mondays available. Um, so the previous Monday is December 7? That's correct. So is the 5.30 time okay? Do we want a five o'clock time? Four o'clock, what works best for everybody? on December 7. So just to clarify, what are we gonna do on December 14 prior to the meeting? On December 7, we'll come together for a study session to okay. look at what everybody's suggestions are, okay. uh, our thoughts that people may have on um, you know, comments to the planning department's form that we're gonna get from Jay okay. in the next day or so, and then on December 7, we can uh, collate all those thoughts and ideas and uh, maybe structure something uh, and word something that would uh, be able to be submitted on behalf of the full commission, but we'll vote on it on December 14, formally. Okay. So we're not meeting before the meeting on the 14th, correct? We will meet on December 7 for a study session. Right, okay, got it. It won't, it won't I, be I, a formal, it won't be a formal okay. commission meeting. Got it. And we won't, we won't conduct any business. We will just be uh, discussing the, the thoughts and comments that everybody's making on the planning department's form. Understood, thank you. Okay, so is, is four o'clock good? Works for me. On Jay, 4 o'clock is okay. Um, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Everybody okay. else, does that work? Yeah. Yeah. 4 p.m. December 7. Uh, and we'll just carve out an hour. Okay. Excellent. Uh, okay. Anything else, Jay? That um, Did you catch anything, anything else that we needed to have on the agenda? No, I, I, that's, that's all I had. Okay, excellent. If there are no other agenda items. And, and we will um, be talking about the uh, uh, awards and the recipients. Yes, yeah, so that's gonna come out of committee, subcommittee. So we'll come out right. of subcommittee, uh, community service awards and the budget will come out of finance. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right, excellent. Thank you all. Uh, it was a good meeting conversation. And, uh, and Ella, please share with, uh, with your family and your dad in particular, if it was just you and your dad, that we do appreciate you, uh, um, you know, uh, coming forward and, and sharing that experience. And, and, and don't hesitate to do that in the future. Um, it's, uh, you know, those, those uh, your, your, your opinion and thoughts and experiences are certainly welcomed. And, and we want to hear about it. So thank you. Okay, it's uh, 7.03. The commission will adjourn to an adjourned regular meeting Monday, December 14, 2020 at 5.30 p.m. via teleconference Zoom. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.